All right. Let's get to the business. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a great night's sleep and I hope you have your teas or coffees ready. This is what we did last time. This time it will be something probably different. Maybe a little bit simpler. <laughs> we'll see. Um, how is everyone doing there? Let me know. So I think um, I got a couple of requests from my friends regarding the way seagulls um, regarding the way I draw houses and do the watercolor stuff with them. So I thought maybe maybe that's what I do on this stream. Let's see. Does it sound like a fun idea? Perspective. There is a Daria twenty two ninety. That's who is that emoji? Hmm. I, I'm not sure I know that lady. It doesn't matter. So yeah, okay. Perspective. Perspective is part of the houses, I think. Also, I heard a lot of people complaining about that um, they cannot draw from their heads. So I thought maybe I can also go through that a little bit. So when if you want to draw stuff from references or from from real life, that's great. I think it's easier to draw from from the real stuff than uh, from references because on references it's already a flat image so you kind of just have to copy image to image rather than reality to image but when you're drawing from fantasy that's completely different and you don't really have any references so I would just go ahead and start to not <laughs> make this stream 15 hours long. All right, so the house starts with a base, right? It needs to stand somewhere. Let's pretend this is high fantasy setting or something maybe set in medieval ages, stuff like that. I don't know, I just really like those houses. Actually, you know what? Mosque is screaming for perspective. Let's let's draw this in perspective. I hope he he join us in that. So with perspective, it's always a little bit tricky. I personally am both a fan and a hater of perspective because it's, it makes stuff really complicated, but on the other hand makes them look really good so there's there's a trade-off this is our horizon line let's let's call it horizon sounds logical we have two vanishing points maybe sometimes it's okay to have one sometimes you want to have three sometimes you're doing some weird stuff with spherical perspectives Oh, we have some more viewers. Hmm, nice. Good morning, Chucha. So the house starts with like when when you're drawing with two point perspective, all vertical lines will be parallel to your uh, to the sides of your canvas. So that's kind of easy. Then you just like draw one of the corners, which will determine the height of the house at its closest to the viewer. So let's say somewhere let's say it's like this this house like this will be how high it is then you just connect those dots to the vanishing points and and there you go this theoretically you can imagine this as 
like a huge house that goes all the way to the horizon. But we don't need that. That's too big. So let's just chop it a little bit. Maybe like here or something like that. Now all the faces that are parallel to this face will have this vanishing point. All the faces parallel to this one will have this vanishing point. So whenever we want to add like uh, I don't know. Let's let's add maybe let's I don't know. Let's let's add a tower to this house. Then this top part will have vanishing point there. I mean here. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> Doesn't matter really. Just a sketch, and this one will go here. So now we have a tower, you know, this is, this is how it goes. Then you, if you want to have a balcony, you need to have like a base for the balcony. Maybe it's like here and then you need to say, okay, this goes here, this goes here as well. So it kind of like sticks out a little bit. I mean, it does look weird all the time when you're drawing it with vanishing points so close together. But, you know, you get to work with, with what you have. I think I will get rid of this balcony actually, I don't like it. Fuck your balcony. Goodbye. Alright. So, Let's say this is a little block of houses. So maybe we have like a little church with a tower that ends here, facing this way. Maybe this is like one house that ends here. And then maybe here is a small house like this. And then here is a house a little bigger don't want to make them all the same. Actually there is something. Hmm. That's my watercolor. It looks like a bottle for pee when you go to the doctor, but it's not. It's it's an a tool for a true artist, okay? Alright. So we have we have our perspective grid sort of like this this will help us a lot in in the future in just a bit actually. So let's draw this this front house. Let's let's design it. Let's say maybe has maybe it has like this classic simple roof with double sides. And let's see where the roof ends. Mosk, are you following along? You ask for perspective. Are you drawing there? I hope you're drawing some perspective. But what's the but? Oh, okay. Take your time. Take your time. So let's say this is a roof of another house and maybe it's sticking out a little bit more like this. And then this house, I said it might be a church or maybe a little castle or something like that. Do you think, or tell me guys. What do you think? Should it be a church, this thing? 
a church or a castle. I will do this one in the meantime. Could be a castle, could be a church. Nobody knows. Maybe this one will be this classic um, step house. this stuff actually if you look at behind this this front face those houses they usually have a simple two-sided roof so it's just the front that looks this uh, nice and stepped so they're actually they're hiding church with a huge spire so should we make this bigger let's make first of all let's make the church smaller then the spire will look bigger you know everything is relative as Einstein taught us let's find the center of this roof so it's kind of here and the center, if well, basically, you know, if you connect all the dots to the vanishing points, you can you can find the center of of your plane in perspective, and then from there you can say you can just go straight up, and this will be the center point of the spire or the tower or something. That's how you find the center. Boom, we have a church. Um, what do you do with this part of the church though? Uh, the tower is okay, but what about the rest? This needs to have a roof of some sorts, right? It's strange if, if the church doesn't have a roof. You know what let's let's say let's say there is like a front no actually you know I, let's let's make the roof for the church maybe it's like a very steep roof meaning very very tall do you think does it does it work with the perspective do you understand perspective? Does it is it a friend or an enemy? That's the question. Let's make this stick out a little bit more. Okay. And yeah, so basically we have we have our base. And then the only thing is needed now is to kind of take it to the next level. Maybe we can add some details and then we can get to watercolors. So with that in mind, we can just go wild here. It's completely, oops, sorry, second camera. Maybe, maybe I can switch to the other camera. Whoa, the perspective. Yeah, so let's get rid of the unnecessary parts. I don't usually erase these lines that much because they really do help to put sort of like a grid on the side. So whenever you want to draw a line on this plane, you, you have some sort of guides here that will help you to navigate to the vanishing point let's say this this church has the clock somewhere maybe here churches usually also have bells so maybe we can say this will be a cut through and 
and then there you would see some bells or something. We'll see how it goes. Don't want to put too many details here. There will be some sort of symbol on top, whatever the church is. Usually there are some decorations here and there. Maybe there are some gargoyles sitting. You don't have to be that detailed yet. There are these, on, on gothic churches, there are these guys, these little bumps on the spires, the little decorations everywhere. I don't know, they, they are easy to add and then they add a little bit of more, a little more flavor, like this specific stylistic flavor to, to the church. So I guess I'll stick with them. Are you guys drawing along or are you just chilling in the morning? I'm really curious. So this house definitely needs like a chimney. This house doesn't need a chimney. That's always a yes in my book. So the chimney it gets. Does the church need a chimney? I say nah. Probably not. Does this house need a chimney? Definitely. Maybe even in front. Yeah. So let's say this one looks like a three story building so it has three floors let's divide it by three jimmy which jimmy <laughs> what are you talking about Moss? who is jimmy This is Jimmy. Hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll have our Jimmys, I guess. Actually, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Hmm. Yeah. That I think that's. It's coming along quite well. There will be some sort of roof here. Don't actually know what kind of roof. Then I think, you know, there, there are these really nice rosettes in the middle of the house. Let's put those in like with, with these things, you know, like the stained glass windows in churches. The, any every time you put the door on the house, it immediately gives it scale because we all know doors, right? We are used to walking through them all the time. So when we see a door, we immediately imagine, okay, this, this house is like, <laughs> in this case, for instance, like this door is a little bit too big because if this is the first floor, then this door almost takes up the whole floor. It might mean that the floor is very small it might mean that the church has really big doors. You know, could be anything. But it does give us the scale. And then here I usually like to put some flowers in the windows. 
Hey, good morning, Nervin. Welcome to the stream. Some windows can be small, some windows can be a little bigger. In these fantasy houses, you can go as wild as you want, actually, but it's always fun to have a little bit of variety and maybe, you know, like some, some of them can be placed really weirdly, like this one doesn't, like the second window, first of all, it doesn't have to be a second window. If you want a second window, it doesn't have to be aligned. Sometimes they're a little bit misaligned and look a little bit weird like that. Actually, <laughs> not quite sure I like how it looks, but you know, you never know. So yeah, again, I really like the half timber houses and that's, that's what I'm sticking with. And usually I don't use references for them, so I just go kind of wild. And sometimes they merge with other, other houses and then you have these weird like clusters of houses that are almost molded together. Right, that would be, let's say it's here and then we add these lines here. Maybe this one goes here, maybe this one goes there. Do I need a line here? Yeah, actually I do. Yeah, that, that sounds, that looks all right. Let's do something with the church a little bit. Maybe this church has little stairs in front. So people from the street have to climb a little bit before entering the church. I don't know why. Let's add a huge window here. This is one of the cool things about churches. They sometimes have really beautiful huge windows. go maybe some statues here and there you know just go as wild as your imagination allows you or don't you don't have to go wild okay so this this part of the house I think it's like this is one house and this one will have a little doorway like an arch that leads in the inner court and maybe there is an entrance to the tavern there or something like that yeah and maybe even yeah maybe here above the door there is like a I want I want to add the sign somewhere the sign that leads to the into the house. Mm -hmm. Where should I put the sign? There can be a little bench here. Hmm. I don't know. Do you think this house needs a sign? I think it kind of does. Maybe here? Yeah, let's put it here. So the, the, si the pipe from the sign will go to the same vanishing point. And then here we'll have something like, like this. Yeah, looks like a sign, right? Let's switch the cameras 
just for funsies. Yeah, there you go. And now we lost the viewer. It's alright. So this house, make sure to know maybe, maybe it's just like a simple house, nothing, nothing too fancy about it. One floor, it's almost a three floor house as well. And then it has this thing is sticking out with some ropes dangling there. All right, I think, I think we're good to go. What's needed now is to clean this mess up a little bit. And then I think, actually, I think I will go ahead and use watercolor straight away and then, and then go ahead go on top of that and use my fine liner to bring out some of the details. So what did this take us? Like about maybe half an hour to draw a simple sketch like that. And again, it makes it a little bit easier if you're drawing it from your head because you're the only person who says if that's what you want or not. On the other hand, the same stuff can make it a little bit hard because usually we are our own hardest critics, so. All right, so what, what I will do now, I think I will draw the sky first. And for that, I want to wet the paper with just water. And if the water looks a little bit blue, ignore it. How, how is it going along there, Mosk? Are you drawing? Is anyone else drawing? I'm really curious. And if yes, what are you drawing there? Let's just put some water. I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I put so much, a little too much water. Not sure. Oh, nice. Dasha, what are you drawing? Uh, yeah, about the recordings, I didn't record the last stream. Well, I mean, this whole Twitch thing is new to me. So I accidentally didn't record the stream, the first one. But this one, this time I turned it on the recording thing. But, oh nice, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Dasha you, what you're gonna produce during this stream. Yeah, re so regarding the, the recordings of the streams, this stream will be recorded. I mean, it is being recorded, I hope and it will be available for i think two weeks i i'm curious to see if i can download it and maybe just make it available for for i don't know for youtube or just cut it in pieces and put it on instagram or something like that so as you can see now we'll, we'll see we'll see how how the recording goes so I put a lot of water and the, the paper gets wobbly, but there is nothing to fear here. Oh no, working on Sunday sucks. I hope you don't have to work too much. Maybe you can, you can have the evening for yourself. So now about the sky, that's kind of simple. I just take some blue take some water I don't know you see that right like there is my blue stuff it's kind of liquid and then just drop it and then it starts 
spreading around and you can put some other colors around if you like other colors in your sky which oh mosk mosk is getting ready cool so yeah you just put the color then you maybe wash your brush a little bit and just spread it until you have the color and consistency that you like maybe somewhere it could be darker maybe somewhere it could be easier uh, lighter easier Jesus. also if you noticed i just put water on the sky so i avoided putting water together on the sky and on the houses because this um, spreading effect i don't want to have it on the houses for now maybe i'll let it later maybe not nobody knows oh sweet having a nice upcoming working day is really cool Although, you know, the, about the jazz, yesterday I was in a jazz cafe here in Leiden. And it was really nice. I kind of like the music there. It has a live stage where people can actually play real music. <laughs> I mean, the recording is also real music, but you know what I mean. Like live music. But I've never been there on the on the concert yet I just drank coffee and you know what actually I I was drawing I was sitting there and drawing and um, I drew the outskirts of the cafe and I posted it on Instagram and later that day the guy from the cafe wrote me a private message asking if I can somehow gift them or, or something or give them the, the painting so that was very really fun and unexpected and we'll see how it goes maybe maybe I'll make a print out of it but I think it's really fun I was really happy so yeah, this was really cool. Maybe <laughs> they could give me free passage to their concerts forever. And for all my friends. It would be fun. So with this format, like, like we have here, I don't really like I don't have the ends of canvas so I don't know how big or small I want to do it so I think I'll just probably I'll just add some extra watercolor with some extra water on the sides here just in case I want to crop it later I think it sounds like a good idea Did I ever think about listening to the concert and drawing the and drawing it at the same time? Well, actually, no. That's an interesting idea. Never thought about it. But I'm also not great at drawing people, so I think, as as all of us, I tend to avoid things I'm not that confident in. Which is not a good thing, I say. So maybe, yeah, maybe one day I can do that as well. I know, Chucha, you did the drawing of some musicians. I don't remember who that was, but I remember you showed me. Was it hard? Because musicians are always moving on this stage, right? Like they're always 
walking here and there they never stand still so it's probably really hard to capture okay i think i think we're kind of done with this guy at least for now maybe i'll add a second layer second layer <laughs> no i mean I mean other musicians other than Siev and me. I think you drew some other ones as well. Maybe it was a cafe, maybe I'm mistaken. Alright. So what do we do with this next? I mean it would be perfect to let it dry a little bit. Maybe I'll do that. And maybe I will switch the camera again just to keep it interesting. Okay, so what I'm thinking this bottom part, I think I will wet it as well and then make it sort of like gray purple ish color and then add some maybe yellow dots for the light that comes out of the windows i don't know why but i'm imagining this to be a, a night scene so to say don't want to get too close to the horizon line where i already have the water because then it will just bleed into the other one. But you know what? If it does, that's also fine. I think that's the way of the watercolor. Except that you can't control it. I mean, you can probably also just learn to control it. I guess that's also an option. Maybe, maybe concerts are great for gesture drawing rather than full illustrations. Since people are moving so much, you can just draw. Although, if you're on, on an opera or something like that, you can draw people who are listening or the musicians who are playing because they're sitting there in the same pose for four hours. Don't have anything against opera. <laughs> I think. Okay, let's try this. This is yellow. I think. I think this yellow is good. So there will be some light coming here from the. Whoops. Um, from the window. We can get rid of that later. Maybe some more, some more light from this window and this one. Maybe from the, maybe the door is open and then this, this whole thing is lit by the door light. And this one as well, let's get some more yellow. Yeah, there are people who can capture what they see really, really well. You can just take a look at and the human being and draw his whole soul. I mean, this I don't mind this bleeding actually. Yeah, especially if you're listening to jazz. That should be easier to draw musicians because they play for so long. However, the the jazz musicians are also sometimes really expressive in their ways. Do you think there is light in the church? Maybe there is. I don't know. Okay. 
So we have our lights and when you're working with watercolor, as far as I understand it, you always work light to dark. The yellow, I will show you this camera. It's that camera doesn't focus. So this this is raw sienna from Van Gogh. Does it focus automatically? No, not anymore. Okay. This is the yellow that I use, and it's actually really bright. I mean, I really like it in terms of brightness because it's bright, but like doesn't look like canary or it doesn't look that artificial. All right. Let's get to the purple part. Purple, I kind of want it to be grayish purple, so I don't really want to have just red and blue because if you just take blue and then you just take red, there it is, a little bit more red maybe. There it is, purple. Oh, three purple part. The purple part. Yeah, I don't know about the, the purple. Maybe I'll add some yellow to it and then it becomes this disgusting mess of colors. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's just mix this with this a little bit more. Maybe maybe a little green there as well. My palette is so messy. It's actually quite disgusting. Doesn't look purple, right? But in this case, we do need to have a lot of water. So, it, oh shoot, <laughs> not, not that much. Woo. That's, that's going wild. We need some water for it to merge with the with the yellow stuff on the ground. So, we need to be cautious of that as well. And then we can always add some darker parts later. I think this is what I really like about watercolor, that it blends on top of itself. So there is no light coming from the dark archway, which would make no sense. This is, this is a really dark spot, let's just move it around a little bit shouldn't be there really. I don't know, it's, sometimes it's really hard to draw stuff because for instance you draw and you, you don't really like what you're seeing. And that's I think a big issue for for a lot of artists, including me. Don't know if you guys have it. But when I have it, I tend to just think, okay, maybe this is just the way I draw right now. It doesn't mean that I will draw like this forever and that my style won't change. So gives a little bit of hope that this is just my current state and if I don't like it, I can change it and move to something different. Like I don't have to like what I do, right? I mean, what I like the results, I think if if you enjoy the process or if you have some goals at the end that you want to achieve, it doesn't 
can also not really criticize your own work that much. Don't know if it makes sense. And if you see that the edges are a little bit too hard, just add some more water. That's the easy solution for watercolor. What a mess. Bless you, Norman. Anyway, so here we are. It does look a little different on camera and actually on both cameras, but let's just move on to the fun part, the house part. I think for that I will need this other brush and maybe since it's details I will go into the second camera. Yeah, that should be fine. It does look really wobbly, but when it gets dry, I think it will straighten it up a little bit more. So this church here, it's definitely definitely stone church i mean i think it looks like a stone church this one will be half timber house and this will be brick house so we have a little bit of a variety here which i do like and with half timber house it's usually quite white like the the main parts the biggest parts of it are quite white but i don't like it completely white so let's say the sun is shining from this side not the sun but maybe the moon or there is a torch whoops I just drew a little bit here yeah so let's say this this side will be brighter and this side will be darker or vice versa no actually yeah this this said lighter this said darker let's go i don't want to want it to be too white so i will just take a little bit of this yellow and water it down really much like this and then just cover this whole thing What did I say? This side lighter, that side darker. So I will maybe just use a little bit more yellow here and there on this side. Why is it so dirty? Out of nowhere. camera I think when you add any color to that white like if you just tone it down a little bit maybe with yellow or with a little bit of blue or something like that then it immediately makes it look more realistic I would say and also a little bit more lively which is nice looks like it's gonna rain okay this as I said this will be stone house and the color of the stone is probably the same purplish 
grayish color that I have on the ground because I was thinking that the ground is also made of cobblestone. So we'll just add this light coat of bluish here. Although if it's the night scene, it's probably it all should be probably much darker, but oh well. There is some ground bleeding into the church. <laughs> Damn it! It's okay. We'll fix it later when when we do the outlines. Outlines fix everything. I like this, I don't know if it's a technique or something, when you put some color on paper, maybe some unexpectedly bright color, and then just smoosh it around with water, move it here and there. I think it gives this really nice watercolory effect. And this should be stained glass, so it should theoretically be very colorful and amazing but I'm not sure I can do that I think I'll just do this and maybe get some green you know just kind of randomly drawing this thing here yeah that, that looks all right let's say this was my plan all along. And then we can add the... We will add, actually, we will add the bright colors in the windows and the door later. Right now, let's focus on this side now. This side is in the shadow, so it's not gonna be as yellow. I think I will add a little bit maybe just like a tiny bit but not like really yellow maybe a little bit toned down by this blue the problem with blue and yellow is that they mix in green and sometimes it's a good thing sometimes that's not what you want so you need to be cautious of that Maybe I should I should just make it more blue so it's really in the shadow. I don't know. I feel like it's it's in the shadow enough. So about this house here, I think this will be the brickwood house. The brickwood? What's brickwood? The brick house. That's the word. So we need some brick color the lighter part and maybe some so for this part that's supposed to be in the little well it actually it probably if the light comes from here this will be in the shadow from this house but let's just still just color it like that I don't know. and then we just take some blue because this side is in the shadow so we add some blue, turn this into this dirty mess. Does it look like bricks in the shadow? I'm not sure. Nah, it needs more reddish, I feel like. 
maybe even more yellow. The actually one of the easier ways to add shadow with watercolor is just to draw everything in one color and then put the watercolor on top with some blue ink and blue pigment and then it works quite well because you can layer watercolors quite easily. Yeah, that that looks alright. Mm -hmm. Let's move it a little bit, maybe here. Yeah, that looks better. Maybe it covers the light. All right, so now we have these sides, and again, as I said, this is this is a stone church. So it will have this little bit more stony color. Yeah, that's, that looks alright. How is it going over there? Mosk, how is your perspective? Are you struggling or are you kicking ass there? So yeah, let's let's finish quickly. Let's finish the roofs, and I think then we can still manage to oh no, we had to stop. That's sad. Let's just finish the roofs real quick and then we'll still have time to do some pass with a with with the ink pen with a felt tip pen and then maybe some time for more watercolor details at least that's how I usually do that Does it look like a roof color to you? Let's see. Oh wow. Didn't see that kind of that coming. But I'll take. I think with watercolor it's also fun to just add some random blobs of color here and there just makes it a little bit more lively and since you can do whatever you want in art who is there to stop you from adding some random blobs of color here and there exactly not cover our sign here these colors the color of the roof here and the color of the house are a little bit too similar so I think I'll make the house a little darker you can also make the roof a little darker or maybe more yellow but I thought I like this house a little darker more. Yeah, I like that. I like that a little bit more. Yeah. Also, let's not forget our um, archway here that is 
and it should be really dark because there is no light source there. And you know how I know that? Because I made it up. Maybe some dots of darker blue on the side, so kind of makes it gradient into darkness a little bit better. And it should be the same gradient as before, though. All right, so we have two more roofs, and I think these two roofs are maybe should they be the same orange? Or do you think the the stone roof will be better, like the sort of to match the color of the church? Hmm. I don't know. Let's. I guess let's do the stone thing. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I think this is like the kind of like uh, blinds on the window that leads to the bells. I saw that once on the church, so that's why it's here. But I'm not entirely, like I haven't been close enough to see what it does. But I think it's just like these blinds. Okay, I think I think that works well. That's that's fine. Let's make this roof as well. Pulses should be a little bit darker, I think. And by darker, I mean bluer because that's how I make things darker. Okay, this I think this part also can be. This part underneath here, I think it also can be a little bit bluer because it's sort of in the shadow. As well as this part actually. As well as this part actually. As well, okay, let's stop now. Yeah, I think it's it's time to add some more details like you know these shadows underneath the roof maybe like shadows on the ground a little bit more also I completely forgot about the light within the houses Also, this will be really well lit because the window is right next to it. Mm -hmm. How is it going there, Dasha? Are you still drawing? Are you still with us? Oh wow, this is really, really a little bit too bright. Let's, let's say the least. Maybe this window is actually dark because there is no light on the ground for it. Let's, let's pretend it's dark. Just like this window here and this window here. Ah. Yeah, it's been about an hour now. So that's what I say. Like you can spend as like 
you can spend as much time as you want on any part and as much time as it takes like this is completely fine it's just the, of course i can spend more time on the uh, on on the sketching part but i just decided to move forward and you can kind of force yourself a little bit to to not get stuck on either of the phases just to you know get it along and also if you s if you sit for too long drawing sometimes you get tired of what you're drawing and you don't want to finish it and then you just give up and it's not it's okay it's just not a great feeling you mixing up where is the light and where is the shadow yeah with that i think sometimes it's helpful to just make like a note the light is coming from this side like, you know make a light bulb and the arrow and then you kind of always remind yourself of that let's do the chimneys also, since this house is behind this one, and the light is coming, oh shit, and the light is coming from here. Yeah, exactly what Nichava says. Just draw, draw a little like sun in the corner and say like the light is coming from here. And in my case, it's more like it's not really diagonal. It's a little bit diagonal, but it as if the sun is setting and there are a lot of I don't know, forests in front of it so it, it's not that bright anymore that's why you don't see the harsh shadows everywhere also we actually if we have light from here then the shadow from this house will also go a little bit darker here let's actually add that I have some dirt in my palette, I don't like that. But of course the shadow will only be darker when there is a shadow, so it's not gonna affect the light. Like this maybe. And then we can take some water and just bloom. just blur it the grain the the margins. Yeah, maybe something like that. I'm not sure if it helped. Maybe it didn't do anything. That's that's also a possibility. Let's make this roof a little darker. Especially in this little corner corner piece. Because that's where it's the narrowest, so it's kinda hard for the light to get there. I think I think now I'm in the stage where I'm adding a little details here and there and I probably will switch to the pen soon and then come back to the ink. I like I really like to add some more colors here and there. Maybe maybe I'll do the timber of the half timber house. Does this look like timber? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe let's just do this.
And as soon as you add these little details here and there, I feel like the drawing starts kind of working somehow. Yeah, something along these lines. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like from from the side, if you look a little bit from afar, now this this all starts to kind of come together. I really I really like this part of the process. We'll add some frames to the windows as well. These ones too. Don't know why I don't have lighted them actually. Maybe that's my bad. <laughs> not, not maybe. There is no one else uh, drawing this thing. So if I don't draw it, no one will. Let's add some green stuff in here as well. wooden things, frames, also I can, actually I can draw this bench here, well and then oh we need we need something darker actually for the other side because the other side as we all know by now looking at these arrows the other side is in shadows so. And I'm thinking that maybe I should make the like this side even darker than it is right now. Because currently it's just a little bit bluish. Nothing too fancy. But maybe it actually needs to be much darker. And the stuff that I'm drawing right now, these timberwood patterns, they are sometimes really, they seem at least really random and weird. Sometimes, like, I mean, most of the time they're just regular, you know, like floor separators and like, everywhere on the sides and all that. But sometimes you don't understand why they put the timber plank there and I think it's just when the buildings are rebuilt this stuff these houses they can be really old so when when the, they get new owner maybe they get rebuilt and maybe he doesn't want the window here and then he just puts this diagonal thing there just put some timber and, and fills in the, the rest of the space and that's how you get these strange things here and there at least that's how I remember I mean not remember imagining it maybe that's completely wrong This a little darker. 
And this one, as we remember, is also timber part. Half timber. Fachwerk house. That's I think the word. Yeah, that should be that should be enough for this one. And then yeah, I think I will switch now to my pen. And also I will switch the cameras back to this one. Don't know why. Just to keep it a little bit more interesting. I don't know if it makes it more interesting though. And I have basically two options that I like to work with. One is the Micron 01. And the other is, I mean, it doesn't matter what brand you're using, the 005. 005 is a little bit thin. And sometimes it has troubles applying the ink on the watercolor itself. Whereas 0 0.1 is thicker and usually has no trouble with watercolor, at least in my experience. But sometimes a one is a little bit too thick, so we'll see. I will start with it and then we'll see how it goes. So now I'm gonna just trace this stuff on the outside. Trace this stuff on the inside. Maybe I'll do the outside with a one. This one. Yeah, Pigma Micron O1. They're really nice, but they're a bit pricey. A bit expensive. O2, oh, oh, O2 oh, is really thick. It's it's also really cool, but I think you I'm I mean it depends on the scale. If you're drawing something big, probably you can use the O2. But I feel like with with my level of detail, O1 is kind of the the biggest you can go. Don't forget our gothic blobs on the roof. I'm sure that's the official name. A gothic blob. You can imagine some people self identifying themselves as gothic blobs. And there are the clock. What's the time now? It's 11.20. Let's, let's put the real time there, why not? It would be an Easter egg for people who know. Okay, the rest I think, the details on the house itself and the texture I will draw with, with another one, with a 005. Because I'm afraid it's this one is a little bit too prominent. And what I like to do also is not to just draw the, the line kind of like this. Because I mean, it's, it's kind of nice, but it's a little bit boring. And if you make, if you want to make it a little more interesting, make it a little more lively, a little more um, less stiff, you can also break it apart and maybe add like a dot or two in there. 
Don't overdo it though, because if you do it too much, it looks really weird. But I think to some extent, it's acceptable. Especially in the like very busy corners when you don't want to have just another straight line. Okay, we need we need a name for this place. Can you guys come up with a name for for this tavern here? Definitely, it seems like a tavern. Yeah, we'll add more details to that later. Now we just this maybe I should switch to another camera for these details. Something like that. And now I think I will switch to the old dog. Hmm. That's good. That's a good one. Let's write it down. Name for the tavern. First, old dog. From Chuchin. Sweet. Let's see. Maybe someone else will come up with another name. Yeah, there is there is a nice uh, band, folk band called Old Blind Dogs. I think it's an Irish band. And they're really fun. All right, time to go straight into the details. Let's go here on the roof. And this, there is this thingy. Okay, there should be like a gargoyle sitting here. With these details, I really like that since it's so small, nobody will really see all the details, but if you just indicate enough of the stuff, people will imagine the rest. I think. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I'm completely wrong. But it seems like that and it seems to be working out quite well. So this roof, I guess, is just the sheets of metal. I don't know. Did, did they do metal roofs? At that time, at that time in this fantasy land, yeah. Okay, now let's let's keep it like that. Oh, Chucha, you have to leave. That's sad, but I hope we'll have this um, this stream available as a recording for for the next two weeks. So maybe that will be something we can watch later. Here I'm just kind of going wild. 
doesn't really like there is no references no nothing and I don't say it as a good thing because I think yeah this this is really really sweaty we have an, another maybe half an hour don't be afraid of messing everything up Dasha this is kind of part of the fun and if you can draw it once it means you can draw it many times so if you mess it up then you can just draw it again and make it better so never be afraid to make mistakes unless it's <laughs> unless you're a doctor I guess I don't know let's not go into details of course you of course you can draw it many times like you what's stopping you from trying it again next weekend or something like that you don't have to draw it perfectly every time or right now i don't know i just add some little dots there hey chucha have a good day thank you for joining us for a little bit maybe maybe we should create a hashtag for instagram like proper stream or something just so people can find the images from the streams easier if they're interested what do you think what do you think should we hashtag proper stream if you're drawing it on stream maybe this hashtag is taken by uh, I don't know water making companies should research that but when I when I will post this one if I will post it I will definitely put the hashtag there yeah have a good day and I'll see you later Chucha. I mean the rest <laughs> the rest please stay This window doesn't really need many details. It's already quite colorful. Just need to add some more, some more lines here and there, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I really do like to just indicate what material this is made of. So, you know, yeah, I, yeah, coming back to the references, I think it's really important and good to use references when you're drawing. So for instance, for this house, you can look up the references of half timber houses and it will make it much easier for you to, to come up with the patterns and the, all this weird stuff. But for today, I decided to just go wild and see where it gets me. It's also important to do that sometimes, I feel like. Go wild. Often the, the towers like that have these little holes in them. I don't know if it's for pigeons or for ventilation but usually pigeons live there. It's probably for ventilation, but pigeons do like it. Uh, 
and if you have seen a gothic church before you know it's all about these tremendous decorations everywhere Just a hint of this being a house made with big slabs of stone. This, I think, maybe I'll just, yeah, I think, I think I, I want to outline everything now. And with little really really light and these very thin pen lines just to make it more you know, bring it a little bit more together give it a little more finished look so to say if there are no people on the image it sometimes looks a little bit empty I found out so maybe I'll add those but it's kind of too late now because um, <laughs> it's already all covered with watercolor I'm trying to be a little bit more thick in places where there are two objects separating from each other and a little thinner in places where um, it's just the texture or the pattern. So for instance, these two houses next to each other, like I want these lines, these lines to be a little thicker than these ones that separate timber from the rest of the filling. Is it called filling if it's a house? I need some architecture sounds true. come back to your perspective all right I think I think we're getting we're getting there yeah it's coming together quite Safari. Problems with Safari. Too bad, too bad. Dasha, how is how is your stuff coming along? Did you manage to figure out where is the where is the light source? Okay, since I don't see any other ideas about the name, I will call this the old dog. Maybe it needs an old dog somewhere nearby, but I don't think I have a space for it. Let's say the dog is in the inner court. To 
just little details here and there. This house, for some reason, doesn't have this green stuff in front of it. Hey, something, something, something turned out. That's great. I'm looking forward to seeing that on Instagram later. I hope you're gonna post it. And then this one is obviously bricks. So let's make sure that people understand that it's a brick house. They don't need much, just small indications of, of the bricks here and there. Uh, yeah, let's, let's figure out the hashtag. I was thinking about the hashtag proper stream because the account is called proper sketchbook without any specific reason. But I'm worried that this is too broad and maybe maybe it already exists. So let's come up with another one maybe. Could be maybe sketchbook stream. Yeah, let's go with this one. Let's, I think it's quite safe to say that this one is unoccupied. Yeah, where should I write it so people can see it? Here? No, here, here. Sketchbook Sunday. Yeah, that could be. That also could be. Is it is it taken the sketchbook Sunday? Or, or is it free? I like sketchbook Sunday. Prop <laughs> proper sketchbook Sunday stream. Let's make it as long as we can. Hmm, the stream, well, the, the topic doesn't really, I mean, the stream doesn't really have a topic. And yeah, the day could be, could be different. Maybe one day it will be Wednesday stream. There is no, no, there are no really, oh yeah. Um, you mean the topic that it's from the stream, not the stream itself. Yeah, maybe, maybe sketchbook, P sketchbook underscore stream is still a good idea. Let's see if it's taking already. And again, just indicating here and there that this is a tile roof. Yeah, I think I think we can take this the this one. Yeah. Does it seems like P sketchbook underscore stream is not taking. So let's get it while it's free.
think something like that. I think I think we're actually almost done it. I will just do a few more touches with watercolor. This I think both of these pens are yeah, if you if you see here they're both they're both water and fade proof. I think especially I can think if it's written here. Um, yeah, micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof fine lines. That's exactly what we did, and that means that we can go on top of that with some more watercolor and do some more fine details. How about that? Sounds exciting. This roof will be a little bit darker, closer to this one, because this casts shadow, but it will just get less and less dark as it goes out, as well as when it sticks out of this. From behind this building. That's exactly, I think it gives it immediately much more volume. Yeah, yeah, that was a good idea. Good job, me. All right, let's let's get some more details here. Some just some shadows here and there. Also, and just like I was saying before, if you want to add shadow on top of your watercolor just take your very watered down watercolor with some dark paint whatever you have there and just put it on top i mean maybe that's a little too light but if you just like put some of it on top yeah then you see it looks like shadow now But this one is maybe a little bit too harsh, so I will just cover the whole thing. I think, yeah, I think in general this side is a little too bright, so I will tone it down. And yes, it will smudge the this timber pattern a little bit. But who cares? I think. It doesn't smudge it that much. You can reactivate watercolor with water, but not really to to that extent that you should worry about that. I feel like this house at the at the end is a little boring. So let's let's make it a little less boring maybe. Maybe add some shadows here and there. Maybe some some stone some stony brick texture. Don't know. Yeah, something something like that. Doesn't think it made it that much more exciting, but at least it's it's less blank. Now, how about adding some shadows on the roof? variations here and there to make it a little more interesting. Maybe a little 
darker within this archway. It doesn't make it darker for some reason. And I feel like maybe this, this whole house can be even a little bit more dark. So I just pick some of the dark paint and with a lot of water, just cautiously hit it here and there. And if you if you put too much of the paint, you can either put some more water or you can just take the napkin or some paper towels and just clean it up no big deal okay it's time for this roof as well to get some love What is this music? Why people are shooting? Let's switch it. It's kind of too intense for, for this stream. Sorry, it took me a while to realize. So this roof will also have this. And then, yeah, then this roof, we can also make it a little darker altogether. darker at the, at the shadow areas. Some darker parts here and there as well. Maybe just some bricks and stuff like that. maybe a little bit darker here as well just to add some volume to it and then there are these statues all over the place just blur the lines a little bit don't, don't really want these bricks to stick out that much Top of the top of the roof. Let's just make it also a little bit more more dark. And by dark, obviously, I mean blue. If you want it to be more dark, just take some more pigment on the brush, meaning less water, more paint. Obviously. You know what? Let's make these. Um, the sides of the roof take these little things a little darker stone just a little bit more of this just i don't know i feel like it's too similar to the rest so i feel like if we add this it will bring it out a little bit more interesting to look at maybe not but 
there is only one way to find out. Something like whoa, come back. Something like this, and maybe just some shadows underneath the houses again. I don't know. I think I already did that, but just to bring it out, I even, I even a little bit more. It's actually, it seems like it's gonna rain here. But that's why maybe the, everything got a little darker. I don't know how this isn't on stream. I think it should be all right. Just adding some texture to the But I think all in all, this is this is it, guys. I feel like we reached our destination for today's stream. We have this fantasy illustration. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fantastic, but we got to start somewhere. Yeah, so I think I think I'll call it a day here. I think let's switch to this camera. So we that's what we have for today. Let me know somewhere how you like it, if you like it, and what do you want to see the next stream. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what you have drawn during this stream. Don't forget to hashtag P sketchbook underscore stream if you post it on Instagram. And I guess I will see you all next week on Sunday for the next stream. Thanks for joining everybody. Have a good day. Have a good week. Bye bye.